And as I prayed for healing, the man looked up and saw a literal hand of light coming his way. And the hand touched his face and he heard in his ears, you are now healed. And suddenly he was healed. He took those thick glasses off and he could see. My brothers and sisters, we serve a God who still can heal the blind, who can open deaf ears, who can still make the lame to walk. And whatever you need here tonight, Jesus is here. I am the Lord, your healer. I'm Jehovah Ropeka. And the Lord will heal you in Jesus' name. Well, I'm almost done. Can you, can you give me three more points? Four, one, two, three, four, four more points of the seven. And the last two will be kind of shorter. So, But I got to tell you, number four, and this is probably the most important, but it ties into everything. And that is that Jesus had the most powerful death any man has ever had. Brothers and sisters, I'm very worried these days because it seems like the Christendom that we are developing this in these days seems to be steered towards how to be a better me, how to be a better you, how to awaken the champion in you, how to make more money, how to be healthy and eat good and take care of the body God has given you. And although these things are very true, and even though I am a prosperity preacher, I believe God wants to bless you financially. And even though I'm a healing evangelist, and I believe tonight God will heal. And even though I, I would encourage, you know, healthy eating and all of this, and we should be positive and, and all these good things, my friend, it bothers me. When you don't tie it all with his death, because it is by his death that everything else is possible. My brothers and sisters, there are people, when you listen to them and you listen to some other religious speaker, they almost speak the same thing. They almost sound the same. But my friends, when Jesus' death comes in, people are offended it's foolishness to the Greeks. It's a stumbling block to the Jews. But his death is so powerful. My brothers and sisters, I tell you, nobody ever died like he died. I can just look back and I see how when they came to capture him, these big burly soldiers, you know, with, with lanterns and torches and swords and, 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 and muscles and they coming after Jesus and they find the Nazarene in the garden and they Jesus stands up and he says to them whom seek ye and they say Jesus of Nazareth uh, this the Bible doesn't say this part but I think it might have happened he might have turned to his disciples and said now you all watch this he said it is I. And the Bible says, John 18, they all went backward and fell on the ground. Hallelujah. Such power burst from him. I mean, if he could create the worlds with his word, who are you to think you're going to capture him? And then when they started coming up, you know, they were like, oh, yeah. And Jesus asked them again, who seek ye? This time it wasn't Jesus of Nazareth. This time it was Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> and my friends, when he was crucified, he didn't scream and say, no, I'm too young to die. No, he gave his life. Nobody took his life. He gave his life. He gladly put his hand this way. And the other hand this way. He might have cringed in pain when they beat him. But like a lamb led to the slaughter, opened not his mouth. He did not object. And they pierced his feet. And he hung upon the cross. And my friends, in the middle of that hanging, 
suddenly Jesus came to the point that was so important in the death of Jesus. Because let me tell you, Jesus was not a sinner. He had never done a sin. Yet he took my sin and your sin and everything came on him. And the Bible says that thou art of purer eyes to behold evil. So God the Father had to turn his face away from Jesus. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And even the Son, the Bible says, withheld its light and a strange darkness covered all the land when God in the flesh was hanging on the cross and my brothers and sisters I'm sure that the superstitious Roman soldiers looked at all this and they became scared they heard us how they fell out under God's power when they tried to catch him now all this darkness and all these weird things that he's saying on the cross maybe he's delirious but nobody can explain this darkness to me and then he hung on the cross and when he had satisfied the wrath of God for your sin and mine for the wages of sin is death he he said it is finished and then one more time he cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost gave up his spirit and at the moment that he died the Bible says the earth rumbled with a mighty earthquake from the foot of the cross tore the rocks in pieces and the mountain shook at the death of the Son of God and the veil in the temple was split in two. Nobody has ever died the way Jesus died. Amen. Thank you God for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, won't you tell us more about that lovely name? But let me fast forward to point five right now. His dead, cold body lay in the grave for three days. And after three days, his spirit came back from Sheol Hades and came right into his body. And like an electric jolt went through the body of Jesus, he rose from the day grave. The angel rolled the stone away and the and the, the keepers became as dead men shaking in fear and the son of God walked out of the death domains with great power and glory <laughs> hallelujah 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 rabakatalabasutalabakaya Jesus is still alive because he rose from the dead. If you go to some other religious readers of this world, he's still in that grave. But when you come to Jerusalem, to the place where Jesus died, there's a sign that says, he is not here, he is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to close now, but... Let me give you point six and seven. And that is, my friends, when he left, his prophecy came true. Because John chapter 14 says, when I leave, I will send the spirit of truth. John 14 verse 17 verse 16 says, I will send, he will send another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit whom the world cannot perceive, because it seeth him not, neither knows him. But you know him, disciples. You've been with me all the time. He dwells with you. But by my Holy Spirit, I will be in you. It says, you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. And verse 18 says, and I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. I will come by the person of the Holy Spirit. And a few days later after his death and resurrection, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, such as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, such as a fire that sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. 
He came. He came by the person of the Holy Ghost and is in you tonight. Let me close with verse 7. And I won't take much time for this. But number 7, we would see Jesus is He will come again. He will literally come. He will not just spiritually come. He will literally come. Amen. He will literally come. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to His return. Oh, not too long from now, perhaps we'll look up and we'll see the one we've not seen yet we love. And we'll see Him come with ten thousands of His angels and the dead in Christ will rise first. My friends, yes, those who misunderstood the part that says, no man knows the day and no man knows the hour. Behold, I come as a thief at the, in the night. I wonder how could you miss that? Which part of you don't know the day or the hour do you not understand? But my friend, he did not come then, but he will come at the time of his choosing. Get ready. Jesus is coming. The Son of the living God is coming sometime. Give God another hand of praise. Hallelujah. I wonder if our musicians could play for us a little bit over there. I wonder if you could stand to your feet right now. And won't you just talk to Jesus. Tonight I have lifted up Jesus. I have loved the church of God. But I did not lift up the church of God. I lifted up Jesus. Amen. I love these pastors, but I did not lift them up. I lifted up Jesus. Sir, we would see Jesus. And I don't know what you need from him tonight, but I want you to know that God can set you free this moment. So I want to ask you tonight, whatever your need may be, if you'll just give it to the Lord tonight.